Oh. Mm. Oh. Strolling down memory lane? You're still here? I thought you left for the day. I keep trying to leave, but the intoxicating scent of dried baking soda and vinegar keeps pulling me back. So, what are you watching? Oh, just the video of some of my former students graduating college. College, eh? <laughs> I'm a father to love myself. That sounds wicked sketchy to me. Remember this, father? Congratulations. How does it feel to be done with school and off into the real world? It feels amazing. And a little scary, but still pretty cool. But what will I do now? What? What? Move the camera. Show off your smarts, college grad. Can you explain how the seasons work for us? Of course I can. Uh, could you please do that now? It's hot during the summer and cold in the winter due to the way the tilt of the Earth's rotational axis affects the intensity of the energy we receive from the sun throughout the year. For real? I thought the seasons were caused by the Earth's proximity to the sun. That's what we thought, too. But our teacher, Miss Reyes, helped us understand how it really works. This Miss Reyes sounds like quite the educator. She was the best teacher we ever had. She was the best teacher we ever had. She was the best teacher we ever had. <coughs> um. Huh? Oh, um, the network must be really slow today. Yeah, it's totally the interweb's fault. Okay, I admit it. I like seeing the fruits of my labors. Is it so wrong to take a moment to remember the good old days? Will this day ever end? Look, Miss Reyes. It's been weeks since we've seen the sun, so I made my own out of paper mache. I miss you, son. I can't wait till the Earth gets closer to you so it finally gets warmer. Wait, what? You think seasons are based on their proximity to the sun? Sure. The closer you get to a heat source, the warmer you get. Like when your marshmallow gets too close to the campfire and then it goes from being melty and gooey to catching on fire. Then you shake it to put out the fire, but the hot, burning mallow flies off your stick and gets stuck in your hair. <laughs> Greetings. Sounds like someone could use a spot of guidance sorting through some very complex concepts. Hello, dear Isabella. Hi, Terry. Looks like you've got a spot of snow. I wouldn't call seven feet a spot, but yes, it's been a rough winter. Shauna has the idea that this snowy winter, and all others, are caused by the Earth being far away from the sun. Makes sense to me. It makes sense to a lot of people. I can see how Shauna would be confused. Hmm, I wonder. Shauna, can you show me how you think the Earth revolves around the sun? Sure. This is the sun, and this is the Earth. And the Earth revolves around the sun in a long ellipse, just like this. So when the Earth is here, it's summer. But what about Australia? When it's summer here in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere. Well, that's because, um, well, um, uh, hold on, I know this, hold on, I do know, um, no, I don't know. It's because the Earth is tilted. Could you repeat that, Amar? Yes, I could. Um, could you repeat it now, please? The seasons are caused by the Earth's tilt. Yes, let's work with that. Tell us more, Amar. Okay, if the Earth is like this. I mean, uh, pretend I'm the Earth. If the Earth were a rutabaga, I don't know anything else. Well, then we have a jumping off point. Amar knows that the Earth is tilted and that the tilt affects temperatures, but he doesn't understand how the tilt and temperatures are linked. That because of the tilt, sunlight falls more intensely on different parts of the Earth throughout the year, causing different seasons. Hmm. I think we need to back things up here. Quite right. Let's form a plan of attack and roll the film. Come on then, Chop Chop. Are you talking to me? Well, who else would I be talking? Never mind. I'll do it myself. 
I find it helpful to begin with Earth-based observations, allowing the students to see that the intensity of energy from the sun changes with the seasons. This intensity is greatest when the sun is closer to directly overhead, like it is during summer. Not only is the sun more intense during the summer, but due to the tilt of the Earth on its axis, our hemisphere is oriented towards the sun, making the days longer. Quite right, dear Isabella. This combination causes the sun to shine more intensely for longer periods of time, allowing more energy to be absorbed and ultimately raising the temperature. It can't come soon enough. Come now, love. Let's focus on the wonder of all the seasons now, shall we? Oh, right. Go on. During the winter, the sun hits our part of the Earth less intensely and for less time each day. So our hemisphere doesn't absorb as much energy. <gasps> and that causes temperatures to drop. Well done, old chap. Now this is a scenario I'm way too familiar with. I think I'm ready to try this out with my students. OK, class. Let's take a look at these two images. Look closely. Both of these pictures show the sun at noon from the same location. But what do you notice about where the sun is in the sky in these photos and where it is in the sky outside? They're all different. Give that girl some vitamin D. Now, how do you think the position of the sun might affect the temperature? If the sun is higher, it can hit us more directly. Hmm, but if it's lower, it would just hit us at an angle, making it spread out and weak. And how would that affect the temperature? The Earth will get less energy from it, and it won't heat up as much. Nailed it! So why do you think the sun appears so much higher during our summer? Amar, what did you say was the cause of the Earth's seasons? The tilt. Yes. And how do you think the Earth's tilt factors into these observations? Well done, dear. Now that your pupils have observed that the position and intensity of the sun varies with the seasons, it's time to tackle the tilt from space. <gasps> We're going to space? Like astronauts? It's a dream come true. No, dear. We're going to use our state-issued projector here. Oh, yeah, of course. That's fine. Pulling G's does a number on my vocal cords anyway. Here, we see the Earth revolving around the sun. Wait a second. It looks like the Earth is moving in a circle instead of an ellipse. That's because even though the Earth's orbit is elliptical, it's such a slight ellipse that it appears nearly circular. You are messing with everything I hold dear. Next, you're going to tell me that the Earth is closer to the sun during winter. Poof, as if. Actually, that's true. Seasons are based on which hemisphere is tilted toward the sun, not the Earth's proximity, love. Up is down, black is white, autumn is fall. It's all too much. Having your students model the Earth's orbit is a stupendous way to connect their Earth-based observations of the seasons to the space-based explanations for why they occur. Sounds stellar to me. <laughs> Come on, give me some. Oh, brother. Shauna, come stand here with your son. Ow. Oh, goodness, that was pretty bright. Now, Amar, you're going to be the Earth. I'm actually a fire sign, but I'll play along. That's very generous of you. <laughs> now can you show me how you think the Earth moves around the sun? You got it, Ms. Reyes. Good, but it's not quite that much of an ellipse. It's more like looking good. Now let's rotate. Okay, keep going. Okay, be careful. Uh, okay, now remember when I asked Shauna about how it could be winter in Australia at the same time it's summer here? You were on to something about that tilt. Well, I can see the tilt, but I don't get how the tilt works. Do you notice anything about how the light from our sun is shining on different areas of the globe? The light is more intense up there. Oh, no! The sun! Phew! That could have been a disaster for Earth. So, what were you saying, Shauna? Look, 
The light is more intense in the northern hemisphere, and it's more spread out and weaker down there in the southern hemisphere. It's just like the difference between the sun being higher and lower in the sky. <gasps> wow. You got it! So what season would this be for us here in the northern hemisphere? Anybody? Summer. Right you are. Now, Amar, let's model a full year. Make sure to keep the tilt pointed the same way in space the whole time. Good. Let's stop here for a minute and check out the Earth again. What do you see? Now it's the southern hemisphere that's tilted towards the sun, and the northern hemisphere is getting the weaker, more spread out light. Yes. So what season is it up here in the northern hemisphere? It's winter here. Oh, those are the memories that will carry me through my golden years. Speaking of golden years, we need to discuss retirement. I've heard good things about Portland. We aren't retiring anywhere. Oh, come on. It'll be great. Remember how much fun we had when we hit up Cancun a few years back? I've told you to never speak of that. Come on. Just consider it. Well, you could dominate the pub trivia scene up there. Nope. Not gonna happen. Bye bye She'll come around. To discover more about how kids learn science and the types of misconceptions they might have, visit us online at scienceeducation.si.edu slash goodthinking.